Good morning, students. Myself, Janish Shah, Assistant Professor In our previous lecture, we studied about that how can we evaluate the postfix expression. We have seen the tabulation method that how can we evaluate the postfix expression. Okay. So, in applications of SAC, let's move towards the next topic. Here, the next topic is convert decimal into binary. Okay. So let's start. The first one is steps. How can we convert a decimal number into the binary numbers? Students, first you need to divide with digit 2. You need to divide any decimal digit with 2. Whatever the reminder you get, okay, put that reminder inside the stack. Okay, so here it is very simple and it's easy. First, divide your decimal number by 2. Then whatever the reminder you get, just put that reminder inside the stack. Okay. So now the next step is do this step until you found one as a quotient. Okay. And after this, pop each element from the stack and append it in the answer string. Print the answer. Okay. So it is very much easy to convert our decimal number into binary. Just wait for a minute. Okay. Okay. So the thing is that what you need to do that first you need to divide your decimal number by 2. Then whatever the reminder you get, put that reminder inside the stack. Then repeat this step until you get 1 as a quotient. Okay. Then pop each and every element from the stack and append it with the final output string. Okay. So let's see. Here, I have example that number 12. Okay, I need to find this binary of number 12 by using stack. The first we need to do that divide the 12 by 2. Okay, so before that, before that, how can we convert this decimal into binary? What I take for my convenience, for my convenience, I'm taking hash, I'm taking hash inside the stack because has shows that stack is now empty. Okay. So whenever I want to pop the element from the stack, I can write that repeat my step until and unless as of top becomes hash. Okay. So first I am initializing stack with hash. If you remember, if you remember that the algorithms of with parenthesis and without parenthesis from infix to postfix conversion, then you need to first initialize your stack. Okay, same like that. I'm initializing my stack with hash. Okay, now taking 12, find out there is reminder that 12 modular 2, the reminder is 0. The reminder is 0. So push reminder inside the stack. Okay, push this reminder inside the stack. So see, the reminder is here inside the stack. Okay, now the quotient part is 6. Okay. So again, do the same step that 6 modular 2 is equal to 0. What we need to do? Push reminder inside the stack. See here. Again, 0. I pushed 0 inside the stack. Then, here, next is 3. What I did? 3 modular 2. 3 modular 2 is equal to 1. Right? So push this one inside the stack. Okay. 1 is here. Now, the next step is get 1. 1 modular 2 is equal to 1. This is our last step because we get quotient 1. Okay. So this is our last step. 1 modular 2 is equal to 1. Okay. So now again push this 1 inside the stack. Now fine. Pushing operation is done. Now just do pop operation. One by one popping out each every, every element from the stack each and every element from the stack and append it with the output string. The first we have one. Okay. So I'm just popping out one and it is here. Next again I'm popping out one. See this one is popping out. So one, one. Next I have zero. Next I have zero. So 
Here is your answer. Isn't it easy? That what I did, I just find out the reminders, put inside the stack, and after that, just popping out each and every element from the stack and append it with my final output string. Okay, so here this is the answer. Now check it whether it is 12 or not. This is 2 raised to 0, 2 raised to 0. Now this is 2 raised to 1. Okay, 2 raised to 1. Okay, this is 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 2 means 4. Four and this is two raised to eight. That means, sorry, two raised to two. This is two raised to three. That means eight. Eight plus four. Eight plus four becomes twelve. Okay, so you already get the answer. I am just taking another example for one zero two, and this is la the last example for decimal to binary conversion. So please make sure that your focus is only on this video. So. First step is initialize the stack. I am pushing hash over here. Next step is do the find out the reminder 102 modulo 2. I get 0. I got 0. Put 0 inside the stack. Okay. Did it. Next step is what is the reminder 102 by 2. That means 51. So 51 modulo 2 is equal to 1. 51 modulo 2 is equal to 1. So that means push 1 inside the stack. Next step is 25 modular 2, 25 modular 2, 1, push inside the stack. Next again, 12 modular 2, 12 modular 2, it means 0. We have already seen this example, right? Just before this. So 12 modular 2 is equal to 0, push it inside the stack. 6 modular 2, again 0, push inside the stack. 3 modular 2, 1, push inside the stack. Next and last step as I have got 1 as my quotient. I am just stop over here. So 1 modulo 2 is equal to 1. 1 modulo 2 is equal to 1. Push inside the stack. So this is my last step. Okay. So students, I just need to pop it out each and every element from the stack and appending with my final output string. So first one is 1. Next again. 1. 1. Next is 0. Next. 0. Next. 1. Next. 1 next zip. So this is my answer. 1 1 double 0 1 1 0. How? So let's see. See 2 raised to 0. Okay, no. 2 raised to 1. Yes, that's why I'm writing 2 raised to 1. Then 2 raised to 2. I'm writing 2 raised to 2. Then 2 raised to 3. 2 raised to 4. 2 raised to 5. Okay, 2 raised to 5 and 2 raised to 6. So 4 elements are there. 2 raised to 6, 5, 2, and 1. Okay, just find out the answer. 64 plus 32 plus 6, it becomes 102. This is how can we verify our answer from decimal to binary conversion. Okay, so I got my answer. Fine, I got my answer 102. So what you did over here, you just need to convert these all steps into algorithm. So let's make algorithm by using this same formula. Okay, so algorithm for decimal to binary conversion. Students tell me what you did the first. First thing you need to do is convert decimal to binary. The first thing you need to do is that, sir, just do modular by 2 and you will get the answer. The first reminder, no, wait. First step you need to do is to initialize the stack. Initialize the stack. So here I'm just initializing, initializing my stack. Top is pointing to 1. S of stop is equal to hash and answer is null string. Clear? Okay, answer is my output string. Okay, and as in algorithm, we start array with 1. Top index is pointing to 1 over here. Next, S of top is equal to hash. Okay, next, step number 2. Enter element in next. Enter element in next. So I'm just taking new data and number. Okay. Next, apply division and add reminder in a stack until you last step. New data is my 12. I'm just giving it to the number 12. Assigning this 12 to the number. I'm taking one variable number which contains 12. Okay, fine. So repeat this step until you get the quotient is not equal to 0. Okay, so quotient is equal to number, number by 2. Quotient is equal to number by 2. 
and remainder is equal to number modulo 2 okay see at the last step you get 1 modulo 2 is equal to 1 okay fine after that if you divide the quotient 1 mod 1 by 2 it becomes 0 it means the quotient becomes 0 so you should not write over the quotient is not equal to 1 but quotient is not equal to 0 fine then remainder then push that remainder at s comma top comma ram okay sir why we need to write s comma top comma ram how you decide okay if you remember the push algorithm of stack it contains three parameters s top and x again repeating if you remember the push algorithm of the stack it contains three parameters s top and ram sorry x here we need to insert remainder in 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 the place of x i'm just writing ram over here next after this step after pushing each and every element inside the stack what you need to do you just need to pop element from the stack and concat the answer so what is my condition repeat while until you get s of top is not equal to hash that's why i put hash over there so i can easily conclude that my top is now pointing to hash so i no need to go further okay again do pop operation pop operation store it inside the temp and whatever the answer you get just concat it with the answer the last one is print the answer okay this is how you can write the algorithm for decimal to binary now the next is reverse the string okay now it is same like this whatever two uh, operations you did from decimal to binary reverse the string mostly works like same so here we have string okay same like the decimal to binary first step we need to do is insert hash inside the s of top next string hamare string we have string is equal to data and append with hash again i am appending end of the string hash so i got that this is the end of the string if you don't want to append hash then even it's fine but your algorithm that little bit change that the your next variable should not pointing to null okay if there is no if there is the end of the string it points to null but i am just for myself i am appending end of the string with hash okay so the string we have it's data and hash so what you need to do first initialize the stack with hash okay this is this hash okay fine now just insert the data push d push a push t push a now what you get hash so do push operation until and unless you will get hash in the next okay first next pointing to d then next pointing to a then t then a then again hash then stop now just popping out this element a t a d so it means a t a and d fine so this is how we can reverse the string by using stack okay so the what you did students you just first get the string append with hash then initialize the stack with hash then push each and every element until and unless you get hash in the next okay so this is pushing operation then start popping out element okay first a then t then a then d so here is your answer a t a d now get the algorithm okay how the algorithm works let's see okay. see over here we have input input is known as a var input string another variable we have reverse that that stores the output string okay next we have the next character function that gives next character of input string fine now let's begin first initialize the stack top arrow 1 s of top arrow hash next we have initialize the reverse because reverse is our output string as in our previous algorithm we initialize answer with null same like that here you need to initialize reverse with null next is get the next character students if you remember if you remember our previous algorithms okay for infix to postfix we took next character 
I am just following the same sequence. See, I'm not doing anything much more. I'm just following the same sequence that if I want to fetch anything from the input string, what I need, what I need, I need a next character function. Okay, I need a next character function. That function returns something, so I need one variable to catch it out. If that function returns something, I need that variable to catch it out. So here, next is a variable that stores the value of next character. Okay, fine. So your next character is a function that returns one by one character from the input string, and that characters will be stored over here in next. Fine. So insert into stack and get the next character. What is the first step? First starting inserted in the stack and again get the next character. Repeat while until you get next is not equal to hash. First call push s comma top comma next. Then again call the next character function. Okay. So this is get at D. First D. Then next arrow next character input gives us A. Then again these steps are continuous going on. Then we put again A. Then get the next character. Again A. Then get the next character. Okay. Such like this. These steps will working out. Now the next one is remove element from the stack and get the answer. Okay. Now remove element from the stack. Remove element from the stack. So what is the remove element from the stack? So for that we need to get first if the stack is emptied until and unless we need to remove element from the stack. How can we measure the stack is empty or not? That's why we put hash. That's why this we initialize this hash over here. Okay. So until and unless you will get a while as of top is not equal to hash. Do pop operation store inside the temp variable. Then concat your temp with reverse string. Isn't it fine? And last, write the reverse and return. See, here I'm not returning anything. That's why this algorithm is known as function or procedure. Think for a few seconds. This algorithm is known as function or procedure. Am I returning over here? Yes or no? No. Okay. I just write return as a statement. I just write return as a statement. Fine. So here, return is a statement. I'm not returning anything. That's why this algorithm is a procedure, not function. Fine. Okay. So, till this lecture, we studied about that applications of stack. First, we see the evaluation of postfix expression. And in this lecture, we learn how can we convert decimal expression into binary by using stack. And how can we convert our infix string into the reverse? Okay our input string in, into the reverse string by using stack. Okay. If students, if you have any doubt, then please feel free to ask me. Till my next lecture, please keep learning, keep smiling. Thank you.